Hey everyone, it's Celtic Fox back here with another video. First video of the year, and this is part of my DIY projects that are going to be happening throughout the year. So this video is just going to go over um, my test bench. Uh, it's a, a DIY test bench. It's an old uh, Sente Arvina case. Um, and so what I've done here, let me show you some things that I've done with this with this internal part of the case. Now, um, you can't see on camera, but let me move it down a little bit. Let me move the camera down. Hold on, people. Oh, down a little bit. Come on. There you go. Um, down here where you can see this piece right here where my hand is, this is actually the um, what would be the right side panel. Um, it actually fits so snugly in place, snug in place, snugly, that's a new word, <laughs> fits so snug in place that I'm going to actually mount feet on it uh, to help raise it up a little bit. Um, so that, that way that's good. So let's take a look over here in a minute. Why is this camera not acting like it's supposed to? Yeah. It's being, it's being a gober. Oh, there we go. Okay. Move this up a little bit. All right. So one thing that I've done. Let's, see. let's get this in here. All right. Oh, it's still, guys. Okay. So one thing I've done is the top of the Avena case. As you can see here in the video. This top of the Avena case actually comes off without. Um, needing to drill any rivets there are if I can put it in here the camera you can see where my thumb is there's actually four screws two on the front here and two on the back that actually hold this in place and normally would fit right up here and that would fit perfectly up there and I could still put that there if I really wanted to if I was doing any kind of like um going to put like a radiator or something in there but I'm not going to need that so that I took this piece out that's one piece that's out. Um, another piece that I took out was the um, piece here for the drive bay cage um, and also for the hard drives. The hard drives were located right here in this area where you can see this this fan. This fan has a mounting um, fan mount here. It's for 120 and 140 millimeter fans. So I took out the the wall that was here um, that normally held in the hard drive cages down here and held in the um, five and a quarter bays up here. And that piece, as you can tell, this is all very hard uh, rolled steel. It's not aluminum. It doesn't flex very well. Um, it is very, very um, solid piece. There's a little bit of give and take as you can see here, but it's a very solid piece. Uh, of steel so that's good so I took that out that was originally like this in here again I just drilled out the rivets that were holding it in place and removed it so another part another part that I took out was also for the drive bay cages that had let's get this on camera a top piece and a bottom piece as you can see here and what it was is the drive bay cage could actually slide in and out um, and so that was removed um, because I didn't need that at all either now the other thing that I took out was this crossbar which was originally up here in this area and this was like right up there, yeah, right there. And the the top piece that I showed you before doesn't even have to connect to this cross arm. But I removed the cross arm so that I could have all this work area right here. Again, this is um, steel. It's not aluminum that I know of, or aluminium, as some people call it. Um, it feels like steel. It's pretty sturdy, solid. Uh, so that's that. Now going over the rest of the 
um, internal part of the cage of the uh, Sente Arvina case, you'll notice I have this piece here, and of course, yeah, it's a little wobbly. What this is actually is, is a five and a quarter to 3.5 drive bay adapter, and I simply just mounted it on the other side of the uh, drive bay cage here because it's all one solid piece. The motherboard tray all the way back is all one solid piece. Um, so I left that. I have here, I'm going to Velcro this in. But this is a, uh, we're going to go closer so you can see it. It has a SATA uh, power connector. And then there is uh, seven um, fan connector hubs here that also are PD PWM if I wanted to use them. So that is going to be, and that fits perfectly right in there. As you can see, not much space at all. So I'm going to Velcro that in there. The power, um, SATA power can come from there. And obviously it can come from there and come around and go to where the normally where the power supply would sit right here. As you can see in this area. So I have a place for the power supply. I have seven expansion bays right here to put in PCI, um, you know, to test video cards and whatnot and everything. The um, front here, like I said, is a 140 and 120 millimeter. So if I have an all-in-one cooler and I want to mount one up here, I can. Uh, that's for the, for, the G, for the CPU or even for the GPU if I have a card that has an all-in-one cooler. Um, I could put it here. I could put the card into the motherboard um, and then I could, you know, just test it that way. Also, the back on here uh, where my hand is, this is a 120 millimeter fan mount. Um, so that can also be good for any 120 mil millimeter all-in-one coolers. Um, as you can see right here, this button is going to be a power button. Um, it fit perfectly in the water hole grommets that I had already there. And I want to thank MNPC Tech um, as a that was a free gift in my one of my purchases through M MNPC Tech. Uh, so I'm going to be ordering up some feet, case feet, uh, to mount to the um, the back side panel. I'll show you the panel right now. Let me just turn this up. So you can see. Oops, let me move the camera up a little bit. As you can see, the panel is very flush all the way across, on the sides, everywhere. It's just flush all the way around, and believe it or not case the panel doesn't go anywhere I could pull on it and the reason is because there's a lot a plastic locking mechanism right here so if I push the button in I can get my fingers in there oh, come on now it's going to come wire on me there you go push the button in I can now remove the tray now what's nice about this tray is that let me see if I can get it in camera this lip right here okay mounts in right here so it holds the tray in very snug and then like I said there's the let's see if I can show you on camera there's two little holes right here that pop out that um, will hold the the tray in from sliding out so that was a really neat design that uh, Sente had with their cases and then they obviously have their tabs as you can see here holding in the, the panel but what's nice about this is there's probably about a quarter of inch of space behind the motherboard tray maybe a half inch down in this area and then there's also a very large opening cutout um, for when you know if I'm doing an air cooler on the CPU or if I have to mount a new mount a uh, new back plate on there um, this is a very open area which is really nice so again if I need to route any cables through the back or underneath the tray I have that ability to do so without them just dangling and hanging everywhere underneath the case so let me pop those pins back out there we go they get a little stuck but you can see them now maybe if you're putting a camera you can see now that they're popped out so 
So that works out well. So I'm going to get some feet. Um, again, MNPC Tech. And I'm going to... See, there it goes. It just clicked right in. So now, when I, without pushing the button, you don't even need thumb screws. Without even to push the button, that locks it right in place, holds it right in there nicely. And if I spin it this way for a minute, you can see, you can see how how very nice and tight it, it keeps the it keeps the panel. So it's a perfect panel. And here's the front side. You can see again, it's very nice and tight. So I'm going to put some feet on the bottom of this to to raise it up, um, because obviously this sticks up a little bit. So the, the case feet that MNPC Tech has will be really nice for that. Um, again, for the the switch, um, mostly going to be working like this in this area when the test bench is open. Let me turn this camera down a little bit. All right, let's do that. There we go. So when I'm working on a, when I'm working on testing a motherboard, testing a graphics card to make sure before I do my next build um, that they work, I have now a test bench. So leaving this area open right here um, gives me that ability. Now you're probably wondering, all right, if I'm not going to use a 3.5 hard drive uh, as to store my operating system, well, let's say I want to use a 2.5 drive or an SSD. How would I go about where would I mount that? Because um, there's obviously nowhere area in the case. Well, before I end the video, I wanted to show you one little thing that I do have. And that is this PCI mobile rack. I'll do a little quick unboxing here so you guys can see. Uh, it's by Sierra. I guess that's how you pronounce it. S Y R A. Sierra. And this is for 2.5 drives only. Um, works with standard hard drive 2.5s, and it works with um, works with SSDs. Now it does come with its own uh, red SATA cable. Comes with over here for a minute. Camera here. Comes with a manual. Okay, a little foam there. That's just packing comes with <coughs> a hard drive protective film. There you go, right there. Comes with a key and screws for mounting. Down the camera, yep, key for screws and mounting. And then it has a, let's put this down here for a minute. It has a Molex to SATA um, connector, as you can see here. Let me just do that. There we go. SATA to Molex. Now, you're probably wondering why. Well, I'll take a look at the, the unit itself, and you'll see why in a moment. Now, the SATA is going to obviously plug into the, let me get up here to the camera. I was going to mount into the SATA port where my finger is, obviously, so that will mount in just like so. And then this extra wire you saw here with the little 4-pin, that actually plugs in right like that. And what this does is this gives the indicator light, which is located right there on the front. Now, let me go grab a... 3.5, I mean a 2.5 drive that I have lying around. And I'll show you how this works. Hold on one second. Okay, yeah, right around the corner. <laughs> so here I have a Toshiba 2.5 drive. It's so again just a small mechanical drive. And so it's a hard drive, not, a, not an SSD. And again, you would apply this like so. There's a protective film cover on the back to protect, obviously, the circuit board and everything. That's how that would go. Um, as it shows, the indication is that this is the opening right up here um, between those two. So you want to line that up 
with all your screw holes like you, like I have here and the circle like I have there. So how this works is let's say you have this in your PCI bracket over here like so. It sits right over your existing uh, an existing PCI slot. Doesn't plug into it, just sits right over it. So it basically covers it up. So that sits in there like that. And then what you do is when you want to put a drive in, let's say if it was already mounted, for example, you oops, let me get in the camera here. You um if you're looking at it, you would be popping this up to the left and it will automatically pop open like so. You then take your drive, slide in. You don't have to you don't have to force it because you'll notice something. That as you push the drive in, the armature works works automatically for it. So let's do this so you can see. You can see as you move the arm in, it moves that in. You push it in all the way and it clicks. Now the connectors in the back are connected to these connectors and your driver is all set and ready to go. Um, it's a great little adapter especially for an HP uh, TC home theater system. Um, it would work great if you want to ever want to swap out your hard drives. Again it's just a simple matter of just to, you know popping the lap, taking out the drive, putting in a new drive, and closing the lid. Again, like I said, there is a key so you can turn it and lock it. Um, so then this this will not open without the key. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using for right in the motherboard space. Now, let's see if we can. So if we put it in here, it would go like so. If I hold my hand there, because I have to put a screw in, and that's how it would go. And then obviously I would hook it up to the Molex or the power. Um, if you don't want to use the indicator light, um, simply because you're not looking back there, uh, it's not required. It's not necessary, not needed. So you could go with a standard power um, SATA power and SATA data, and then that would be fine. You just wouldn't be able to tell whether the drive was actually on or not um, by looking in the back of it, but who looks in the back of their HTPC um, case you know, to see if their hard drive is working. Obviously if it's working and the operating system is coming up, obviously it is working. So so again, this is a little nice little um, item that's going to go into the test bench <coughs> Excuse me, that I'm going to be using so that when I need to put in like an operating system or whatever, all I have to do is just again, like I said, slide it in, connect, and turn the system on, um, test the graphics cards, test everything that I need to test. Um, so that's going to work out really well. Um, so this was a video, a quick video of uh, my new DIY test bench um, that I'm going to be using uh, for future builds. Uh, and when I, need to, when I need to do future builds and things, this test bench will come in very handy for that because then I can test the motherboards, I can test the items that um, I need to, to put in the case to make sure that they're working properly and that everything is uh, functioning. I can even load up the operating system um, prior to installation of the, of the final installation of the case. So that's when I get everything done and everything is tested. All I have to simply do is just uh, install all the parts. Uh, so that was that. Let me just put this over here and put this back in here for now because I'm not going to use it just right away. I've got some builds coming up that I'm going to be doing. Uh, stay tuned for those. Let me put this back in here so I don't lose everything. Um, these are really inexpensive. They're less than um, these little um, hot swappable bays are less than uh, $40. You can usually get them on e um, Amazon, um, eBay. Newegg usually carries them as well. Um, so you can um, definitely find these uh, in most retailers and things like that. Um, if you're wondering what motherboard this is, this is an old 
uh, AMD Athlon motherboard. Um, it's by Abit, a company that's no longer around that I know of. Um, it's a very old board with uh, DDR1 memory, um, 24 pin obviously, and 4 pin, eight, uh, 4 pin up here. Um, had IDE connectors on it. Uh, even had a floppy drive connector right here. Um, had an AGP port here and then the rest of PCIs. I only put this in here so that I could show you what the motherboard, a full-size motherboard would look like. Um, I don't believe this case was made for uh, mini ITX or smaller motherboards. If not, I probably will be using a tap and die system to tap out and um, put the um, mounts in uh, for the spaces so that I can mount smaller motherboards in to test them. Um, but most of my builds are going to be full-size uh, ATX motherboards anyway, uh, so this works out perfectly fine. This uh, this mini um, test bench that I'm going to have here. Um, so this is Celtic Fox. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Um, leave me a comment in there if uh, you have any questions or anything like that. And I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.